Today, Samsung is releasing their newest Gen 3 NVMe SSD that focuses on a balance between price and performance, and that is called the 980. So it's not a Pro, it's not an Evo, it's not even a Qvo, it is just the 980. It will be available in a 250 gigabyte, 500 gigabyte, and a one terabyte capacities, but unfortunately, I don't have any information if they will release any larger ones in the future, because that would be nice. And I also don't have any US pricing, but they will cost 60, 80, and 150 euros respectively here in the Netherlands. Now, that's not really cheap for an SSD, but per usual, Samsung always starts up with high recommended prices that usually go down quite a bit once they hit the market. Anyway, uh, let's see how they actually perform and what should we expect from the brand new 980. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their K60 RGB Pro. This affordable mechanical keyboard comes with Cherry's brand new super smooth viola switches, a nice aluminum finish and of course a bunch of RGB. Check it out using the links in the description below. I have to say that the exact positioning is not completely clear to me. Uh, it seems like they're positioning uh, this as a successor of the 970 EVO, but they also kind of use some clear cost saving measures and they dropped the EVO at the end of the name. So I do suppose there will be a 980 EVO at some point, and this is just a new category. But let's start with some of the basics. So this is a Gen 3 NVMe SSD that is based on a 3-bit MLC or TLC as you would prefer, flash memory. It comes with a pretty standard durability stats like a 600 terabyte total bytes written for the 1 terabyte model, 300 for the 500 gigabyte model and 150 for the 250 gigabyte one. You get a typical five year long warranty and as usual, it supports a number of data encryption options. Also in the true Samsung style, they made sure that this SSD actually looks sleek and elegant with a black PCB and a simple sticker. Now, unfortunately, they also decided not to give that many details about the technical side of the drive. Uh, usually they would always specify the name of the controller or how many layers the memory consists of, but now they only say it's an in-house controller. It still uses SLC caching, which they call TurboWrite, and that means that the performance will be better as long as you keep a little bit of free space on the drive, which you know you should do with all SSDs anyway. But as you can see, it doesn't have DRAM cache. Now, most mid-range and high-end SSDs use that DRAM cache to make sure that the SSD feels fast in those everyday tasks, and the lack of it usually means that they are saving money and cutting some corners. But this is where it actually gets interesting here. So Samsung is claiming that thanks to the technology called host memory buffer or HMB, the 980 SSD should actually be very competitive even without that DRAM cache. The HMB basically uses a little bit of your system's memory to boost the SSD's performance. And this isn't something that Samsung invented. It's been around for some time now, but so far, most drives that relied on that were not that great. So let's dive straight to performance graphs and see if Samsung managed to implement this technology just right. Now, starting with sequential reads and writes, the 980 looks like a pretty standard Gen 3 drive. It shows decent peak read speeds and reasonable, but definitely not exceptional write speeds. The smallest 980 does drop off by quite a bit, which is quite usual for smaller capacities. But to me, the PC Mark 10 is a more useful way to look at an SSD because it has several different tests that are meant to, you know, replicate that actual real world usage, not just straightforward transfers. And I usually start with the PC Mark 10 quick test that is meant to replicate all the little things we do with our systems that are not that heavy on your SSD. Uh, for example, that is uh, working with documents, uh, looking at photos or playing some games. Now, this is mostly an indication of the quality of the controller, uh, which explains why the three 980 drives are so close together in these graphs. Score of around 300 megabytes per second is not bad for Gen 3 drives with a focus on value, and it clearly outperforms some of the popular budget drives like the Kingston A2000 and the Western Digital SN550. It is also not too far off from the best Gen 3 drives on the market and even some Gen 4 drives. So the 980 is definitely a very good option if you're just looking to add some extra storage to your system. Now in the full PC Mark 10 suite, uh, which is a much more intense test meant to replicate some serious active use, like if you're using a drive as an OS drive, for example, or as a scratch drive for your video editing rig, 
and here the 980 actually does a great job. The 250 gig model uh, does get left behind a bit, which is again very usual for smaller capacities, but both the 500 gig one and the one terabyte model are doing really well, even outperforming most of the Gen 4 SSDs. The SN850, 980 Pro and the MP600 Pro are ahead, but keep in mind those are some of the best and most expensive Gen 4 drives out there, with only the Kingston KC2500 being a real Gen 3 competitor, and keep in mind that drive is not that cheap either. But unfortunately, when it comes down to PC Mark 10 consistency test, which is a very extreme multi-hour long stress test, all three SSDs dropped way down in the graphs. Now, you shouldn't really worry about this test as a regular consumer. Uh, it just means that this SSD is not really meant for any kind of server or heavy workstation scenario. Now, this performance drop in extreme scenario is just a part of the design of the drive and not a result of thermals, for example, because this SSD doesn't get really hot. It reached around 85 degrees on a bench without any airflow, and that is after stressing the drive for a while, so it's definitely a great option for laptops as well. I did a retest with both a heatsink and a fan pointed at the SSD, but that didn't change the benchmark results at all. Now they're adding a new feature to their Magician software as well. Uh, usually their software was used for uh, firmware updates, for health checks and data migration, uh, but now they will add a feature that's called full power mode. And they're claiming that this feature will help to keep the performance at a maximum and that it will have some benefits when you're waking your system up from sleep mode. Unfortunately, uh, this feature wasn't available when I was filming this and when I was testing the drive, so I didn't have a chance to uh, check it out and see if it's anything interesting or not. But if you are going for one of these drives, uh, make sure to give that feature a go. That is all I wanted to say today about this new 980. Uh, it is a drive that actually performs really well as a primary OS drive and it will do a good job if you're just looking to add some extra storage for your PC. Uh, you just have to remember to not use it in any kind of super heavy workload scenarios and you will be fine. But because the SSD market is also very competitive these days, uh, it will also very much depend on the price, right? And since Samsung has a reputation of launching their products at extremely high MSRPs, only to see them drop quickly in the first few weeks or months, I'm not really expecting these drives to be really interesting today, but I do think that they will get there very soon. Now, all we need to see are some larger capacity Samsung. Now that's it for today, I really hope you enjoyed this review, if you did please give me a like and subscribe to Tech Testers to never miss a video. Bye guys and see you in the next one, bye!